Nice to see you again. Nice to be here again. It's been uh, nearly two damn years since you and I talked. They've been tumultuous. The last time I was here, I had a president who had just given me a National Medal of the Arts thing, which we argued over. Yeah. And now we've got a president who blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> Except the court says he can't block anybody. So my question is, do I really want to follow that guy? I don't think so. You got the opportunity now. But now wait, wait, so when did he block you? He blocked me about eight or nine months ago. It's been a long time. It's hard. What to did remember. you do, Stephen King? What did you do to that good man that hurt his feelings so much that he felt the only way to defend himself was through your harsh and hurtful words? Was to block well, you on Twitter. I might have said he had his head somewhere where a, a certain yoga position would be necessary to get it there. <laughs> and that was it, man. That was it. I don't think he's that flexible. I don't think he could do it. I don't think he could do it. Now, did you strike back? How did you strike back? Well, I blocked him from seeing my next movie, which was it. So, no balloons for Donald Trump. Wow. Have you ever blocked anybody? Yes, I blocked Donald Trump. You blocked Trump? I did. The whole administration? No, actually, I blocked Mike Pence, too. <laughs> you know, because whatever Donald said, Mike Pence would come out and say, that's right, exactly. And, you know, there was something about him, too, about Mike Pence that's creepy, and I think it has something to do with the hair. The hair doesn't look like it has strands. It's just there. You know, it's kind of this soap opera. He's like the mean doctor on a soap opera, the one who sells <laughs> drugs, you know. Right. Or has Secretly. a prostitution ring from Bulgaria or something. <laughs> How's that look? Right, right. How's that right. look? You know, he's. It looks like, like it's just one piece. It looks like his hair just snaps on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a Lego. Like a Lego <laughs> up there. Now. Um, and he tweeted so much. Mike Pence tweeted so much, and Did it he really? was always like, I'm honored to, and then fill in the blank. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of that. So, so. boring. It was boring, so I blocked him. <laughs> I blocked his ass. You know what that is? You know what that is, Stephen King? That's hashtag winning. <laughs> <laughs> Does Trump remind you of anyone from any of your own stories, master of horror that you are? You know, in a way, yes, he does. He reminds me of, there was a character, Greg Stilson in The Dead Zone. He reminded me a little bit of him. And then there was this character, uh, Big Jim Rennie, who was in a book called Under the Dome. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the uh, town selectman who thought he knew everything. And the town gets cut off, and he becomes sort of like the tyrant of this little town, Chester's Mill, until he chokes on his own pollution, which he kind of causes. So there's a little bit of that. But, <laughs> you know, the other thing. When I think about Trump, I think about the Superman comics I read when I was a kid, you know. It was like Obama was president, and you know Bizarro World? Yeah, sure. In the Superman comic book. Yeah. So Obama was president. Trump is like Bizarro president. <laughs> you know, so there's some of that. Just to balance out the universe, we had to have that That's guy right. next. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you've got, you've got, you, you have another book. You've, you've gifted the world with another book. It's called uh, The Outsider. Yeah, they make um, wonderful gifts. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I noticed something that maybe you maybe didn't notice, something like that. Covers printed upside down. That is, makes it more valuable that way. No, it's like one of those actually, stamps. it's supposed to look that way because if you turn it around, are we getting a good picture of this? Nope, yeah. we're not. Right here. <laughs> like this, if you turn it upside down. Yep. There's the, there's the, who is that? Is that The Outsider? Well, I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> no, it's, you have to read the book to find that out. It's 500 pages. It is 500 pages. Just, I know it doesn't matter, but how many man hours does that? Because you've written so many damn books. 500 pages, what are we talking? Well, I, you know, we were talking about that in the green room, and I think probably one, two, three drafts, it might be like 1,500 hours, something like that. But... You know, James Patterson does one in 12, 12 hours. Just 12 hours and... Really? Actually, that's two books, so... <laughs> no, but, you know, the thing is... 
<laughs> I've got him coming on a couple of weeks. Any questions you want me to ask him about efficiency? Go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. He, he and I uh, have a uh, mutual respect, sort of. But in, <laughs> in any case, shall I dig it a little deeper yeah, if I possibly sure, please, can? Please. Uh -huh. The thing about, yes, it's, it's a lot of hours, but it's sit-down work, and yeah. it's three or four hours a day, and it pays pretty well. That's what I hear. So what's it about? Uh, you, you got, you got, you know, you've made people scared of clowns with it. This is, I don't know what that guy, is. look on the front, I'm not sure what that guy, is he, is he a garbage man? What is, who, who, well, actually, who are we going to be afraid of now? I don't want to tell you that because that's, anyway, I got interested in doubles. There's a story by uh, Edgar Allan Poe called William Wilson where a kid goes to school and he meets his exact double there. And then, you know, it's like when the universe wants you to write a book, you keep finding these same confluence things. And, and so I read a book called Dead Wake about the Lusitania. And at the time that the Lusitania was torpedoed, uh, a woman had said to this man, come on up on deck because I've seen your exact double. So they were walking around the deck looking for the double when the Lusitania was uh, torpedoed. And they lived because they were looking for this double. So I was thinking about, well, people say everybody has a twin somewhere in the world. And so I decided that I would write a book about a man who was accused of a horrible crime, a uh, pillar of the community. And um, he's convicted in advance by DNA, eyewitnesses, and fingerprints. But at the same time, he has an ironclad alibi that he was 70 miles away. So it's kind of like uh, the irresistible force meets the immovable object, if you will. And so I wanted to see how that played out. Because both of them are undeniable proofs. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, somewhere there has to be an outsider in this mess. So I decided I would write a book called The Outsider. And there it is. Sure. Stephen, thank you so much. Thank you.